Hello friends, my name is Tushar and today I'm going to talk about Skyline problem. This is a very popular interview question and LeetCode also has this question. So you're given start, end and height of some buildings. From a distance it looks like that these buildings are overlapping with each other. So the question is to output the skyline of these buildings collectively or in other words how would you merge this overlapped buildings? This question could also be seen as merging of two dimensional intervals. So in this case, I have five buildings. For example, building one starts at one, ends at three and height is three. So it's starting at one, ending at three and height is three. Building two starts at two, ends at four and height is four and so on. And this is the output I am looking for. So first, let me show you how this points can form the skyline of the city. So what I've done is I've put these points in this graph here. So one, three is uh, here and two, four is here. And now let me show you how I can form the skyline from, uh, from this uh, points. So I start from zero, zero and keep moving on in the horizontal direction till I hit the X distance of the first point, which is one. And then I start moving towards that point in the vertical direction. Then as soon as I hit that point, I again start moving in the horizontal direction till I hit the X distance of the second point, which is two which is two and then I start move, moving towards that, that point and as soon as I hit that point I again start moving in the horizontal direction till I hit the x distance of the third point which is four. As soon as I reach that point I start moving towards that point and then I keep repeating this process. So again I move in the horizontal direction. As soon as I hit the fourth point I start moving towards it and then again in the horizontal direction and then I start moving towards this fifth point and then horizontal direction and then the sixth point this and this so this is the this is the combined this is the skyline view of this buildings merged together let me point out the points uh, these points in this uh, in this input here so this point here this here this here uh, this, 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 this and this. So these are the eight points which we need to find out to form the skyline of the of this merged buildings. So next let's see how we are going to find this points in this example. As you would have noticed all the action is happening either at the start of the building or at the end of the building. Also the height of the building is extremely, extremely critical. So the algorithm is as follows. We move from left to right encountering the starts and the ends of the building. Whenever we encounter a start of a building, we push the height of that building into a priority queue. If the max in the priority queue changes, it means that this building at this start point must be taller than every other building which is overlapping at that start point. So it needs to be part of final answer. Also, whenever we encounter the end of the building, we need to remove that building from the priority queue and again if the max in the priority queue changes it means that that value needs to be part of final answer. So let me explain this uh, algorithm with the help of this example. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the start of the building and end of the building into two different points. Here we had five buildings so in total we'll have ten different points. So for example one, three and start so at distance uh, one, at distance one on the x-axis and three on the y-axis, this is the start, which is this point, and then two, four start. So again, at distance two on x-axis, four on y-axis, this is the start of another building, and three, three end. So at distance three on x-axis, distance three on y-axis, there is an end, and so on. Then we're going to sort these values by their x, x these points by their x values. And if the x values are same, then you have some complicated tiebreaker rules, which I'm going to discuss later on. So for example, if the x values are same, then I applied some tiebreaker rules, which I'll discuss later on. And then I'll have a priority queue. Initially, the value in the priority queue I'll add is zero, and the max value in the priority queue is zero. Then what we're going to do is, we're going to iterate through these guys, these points one by one. So and apply our rules. So we hit this point. This is a start. 
So if it's a start, then we're going to add this y value into this priority queue or this height into this priority queue. And then we're going to check adding this, does it change the max in the priority queue? So before adding the max was zero, after adding the max is three. So yes, it changed the max. So when it's a start, so this needs to be in the part of final result. And when it's a start, we put this value into the output. So one, three goes into the output. Then we encounter uh, two, four, and this is also a start. Let me first change the max value before we do that. So we encounter two, four, and this is also a start. So again, we add four into the, uh, four into the priority queue, and then we check adding this, does it change the max? So before adding the max was three, after adding the max is four, so yes, it changes the max. So first we change the max value to four, and then add this point as is into the final output, so two, four. So as you can see here, at point two, before the start of this building, the maximum height was uh, three, and then this building has a height four, it means that this point here is going to show up into the final result. Then we encounter this point three, three, and this is an end of a building. So when you encounter an end of a building, you're going to go and look for this height three, this, this y is the height, the height three, and remove it from the priority queue. So I remove three from the priority queue. After removing three, I'm going to check, has the max value changed before and after? So before it was four, after the max is still four. So this three, three E is overshadowed by this building, and it's not going to be show up in, showing up in the final result. Then we encounter this value four, four, end. So again, it's an end value. So I go in and, re and remove this height four from the queue. So I delete four. So after removing four, the height, so max height is zero and before it was four. So it means that the height changed. So this needs to be part of final result. So when we are removing, when we are, when we are reaching the end, the value in the final result will be four and whatever is the max in the priority queue, which is zero. So when, when we encountered the start, the value would go, would be this, this X and Y value into the output. And when we're encountering end, and if that goes into the output, the value which will go will be the four like X and whatever is the max in the priority queue. Also, we change this value to zero. Now we encounter five, two, and this is a start. So we go in and add this value two into this priority queue. And after adding two, the max changes before, because before it was two. So this needs to be part of final result. So we're going to add five, two here. Then we're going to encounter six, four. This is also start. So we're going to add four into the queue and a max value changed in the queue. So this becomes four and we're going to add six, four into the final output. Then I'm going to encounter this point seven, four and end. So it's an end value, so we're going to go in and delete this 4. So after I delete this 4, the max in the queue is 2. Well, the max value before deleting 4 was 4, so max changed. So when the max changed, this is going to be the part of final result. So again, 7 and whatever is the max in the queue, so 2. So what happened here was, as you can see this point, after I remove, after I encounter the end of this building, I'm going to remove the height. After I remove the height, whatever is the max height remaining at this point, which is this height, which is two. So that will be the Y or Y value or the height value. And seven will be the X value. So which is why this point seven, two here. Then we're going to encounter eight, four, and this is a start. So I'm going to add four into the priority queue and that changes the max value in the queue. So this value becomes four and eight, four will go into the final answer. Then I encounter this point eight, two, and this is an end value. So I go in here and delete this two, which is this value. And this doesn't changes the max because the max here is four and before also was four. So eight, two and end is neglected. So, so here, this point is not going to be the part of final answer. And then finally, nine, four, and E. So you remove four. So after you remove four, the max value has changed now because after removing it zero and before removing it was four, 
So 9 and whatever is the max here, so 0, that will be thought of final answer. So this is the output for this building, which is what we had uh, which we, which is what we had seen before. So next, let's look another example to see some of the edge cases for skyline problem. These are the three edge cases for this problem. In edge case one, if the start of two or more buildings is same, then the building with a higher height should be looked first before looking at the building with a lower, lesser height. So in this example, both these buildings have start point zero. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to look at the building three, the one with the height three first before looking at the height two. Because here the answer, if you go in this order, the answer will be this point and this point, which is correct. If you go in the opposite direction, you will also get this point as an answer, which is incorrect because this point here should be overshadowed and you can work it out in an example. In the other case, if the ends of the two buildings are same, two or more buildings are same, in that case, the one with the lower height should be examined first before examining the one with the higher height. So here, both these buildings have same end, so one with the lower height should be looked first and the one with the higher height should be looked later on. Again, the problem is same. If you go in the opposite direction, this point will also show up in the final result, but that is incorrect. And finally, if a start of a building, if an end of a building overlaps with the start of the next building, then the next building start should show up first before you sh show, show the end of the first building. So in this case, this should be the correct output, this point, this point, and this point. But if you reverse the order, so if you put this uh, end of the first building before uh, looking at the start of the next building, then this point would also show up in an answer which is incorrect. So next let's examine the time complexity of this problem. The basic operations we do in this algorithm is either adding an element to a priority queue, removing an element from a priority queue, or looking at a max value in the priority queue. How many times we are doing this? Two into total number of buildings we have because we are doing it for the start and end of the building. So if all the three operations can be done in O of log n time, the total time complexity will be n log n. But most of the priority queue has a very good support or log n time support for add into the priority queue or max value in the priority queue. But none of the priority queue I know of supports uh, removing the priority queue also in the O of log n time. So either you can write your own version of priority queue or in Java, I use tree map because tree map supports all three operations in O of log n time. So this is what I have done in the code. So next, let's look at the code for this example. The main function here is get skyline. It takes in a two dimensional array which indicates buildings. So in this example here, we have six buildings. Every row indicates one building where zeroth column is the start of the building, first column is end of the building, and second column is the height of the building. By the way, I'm using this website, educative.io, to create these visuals. Check out this website if you want to create visuals like this. Then I'm going to have this array building point. Building point is nothing but an X, and then if saying that it's, is it a start of the building or end of the building, and then height of the building. So we will have twice the number of building points as, as many buildings as we have. Then we're going to iterate through each building and for each building we're going to create the start of the building in the building point and end of the building in the building point and add them into this array building points. And then we're going to sort this array building point. So sorting is extremely important. So let's look at this method compared to which does the sorting. If x is not same then the lower x then the one with the lower x comes first. But if the value of x is same then we have this tie tri breaker rules where if uh, one building, if, if both of them are start of the building, then one with the higher height uh, comes first. And if both of them are end of the building, then one with the lower height comes first. And if one is the start of the building and one is the end of the building, then one with the start of the building comes for before the one which is the end of the building. So as I discussed before in the video, then I'm going to initialize my queue in this case, the queue is nothing but a tree map because tree map supports add, remove, and map find max in O of log n time. If you want, you can use a priority queue as well. The only problem with the priority queue is it doesn't support remove operation in O of log n time.
In tree map, the key is height and the value is count of height or how many times this height occurs. First, we're going to put in map this value 0 and 1 saying that 0 occurs 1 times. Although there is no building with height 0, this is very useful to simplify the program. Previous max height is initially 0. So here, moving forward, these are the list of the building points. Since, in, so, since we have 6 buildings, we'll have total 12 building points, one each for the start of the building and end of the building. Also, T indicates that it's the start of the building and F indicates it's an end of the building. Then we're going to initialize this uh, result array, which is going to be useful to store the final result. Here in my map, I have value uh, height 0 occurring one time and previous max height is 0. So now we're going to iterate through building point one by one. So the first building point we encounter is 1, 4, T. T is indicating it's a start of a building. So we go into this if condition. What this does here is if, if the height exists in a map, then it increments it, it increments it count by one. And if it doesn't exist, then it just adds it. So in this case, uh, height four doesn't exist in a map. So we're just going to add it into the, into the map. Then I'm going to get the current max height. So the current max height after adding this, becomes four. Now the current max height is not same as the previous max height. So we go into this if condition and then add building dot x. So this value one and then current max height four into the final result. So result will have one comma four and then previous max height also becomes four. Then we're going to go back to the top of the for loop and get the next building point, which is two, two and t. Again, this is start of a building. So we go into this if condition, two doesn't exist in a map. So we're going to add it into the map. Then we're going to get the current max height, which is four after adding two. And then current max height is uh, still continues to be same as previous max height. So we don't go into this if condition and then get the next building point, which is three, four and T. T again is the start of a building. So we again go into this if condition four, this height four already exists. So in this case, I'm just going to increment my count of four by one. So this becomes two. And then current max height after adding, after, if, current max height continues to be four, which is not, which is continues to be same as previous max height. So we don't go into the if condition and go back to the top of the for loop. The next building point is three, four and F. So F is indicating it's an end of a building. So we go into this else condition. So in the queue, if the in the queue, if the count of the value is greater than one, we, then we decrement the count by one. And if the value becomes one, then we just return, then we just delete that entry. So this is what this is doing. So in this case, for four, the count of four is two times. So we're going to decrement it by one. So the value becomes one. And after decrementing it, we're going to get the current max height, which continues to be four. And then current max height is same as previous max height. So we don't go into this if condition, go back to the top of the for loop and get the next building point, which is four, four and F. So in this case, uh, we, are, we are again going to go to this else condition. And then here we are going to decrement uh, the count of this height four. And after decrementing it, it becomes zero. So we're going to remove this entry from the map and now we are going to calculate our current max height. So now the current max height will become two, which is the max of the both these values. Now current max height is not same as previous max height. So we go into this if condition and add this into the result. So we're going to add this X, which is four, and then the current max height, which is two into the final result. So this point here, this is going to be in the final result. And then I'm going to set previous max height to be two. And then we're going to go back to the top of the for loop and get the next value, which is six, two and F. So two exists once, once in the, so it's an, it's an end of a building. So we're going to check how many times two exists, two exists once. So we're going to delete this entry two. And then after deleting this, deleting this entry, our current max height becomes zero and zero is not same as two. So we're going to add this uh, six and zero into the final result. So that's this point here. And then we go back to the top of the for loop, get the next value, which is 7, 3, T. So height, so height 3 doesn't exist in a map. So we're going to just add it in the map with the count 1, which is in this if condition. And then we're going to check the current max height. So after doing this, the current max height becomes 3. And 3 is not same as 
zero, which means that we need to we which means that this if condition is true. So we add this uh, seven and then current max side three into the final result. So this point here goes into the final result. And then previous max height also becomes three. Then we are going to go back to the top of the for loop. This time I'm going to encounter eight, four and T. So this is again start of the building and height four doesn't exist. So we're going to add height four into the head, add, add height four into the map. And now I'm going to get the current max. So the current max now becomes four. So current max is not same as previous max. So we're going to add this into the final result. So eight, which is this value four, which is the current max into the final result and also set the previous uh, max height to be four. And then we go back to the top of the for loop, get the next value, which is nine, three F. So this is end of the building. So uh, we are going to go to this else condition. The count of three is one, which means that three needs to be deleted from the map. So it's deleted from the map. And this time the current max height is still four. Previous max height was, is also four. So we don't go into this if condition, go back again to the top of the for loop and I encounter this next, uh, next uh, start building, which is 10, two. So two is not in the map. So we're going to add two into the map. And then I'm going to, uh, and then the current max height continues to be four, which is uh, same as previous max height. So adding two doesn't change anything. So we're going to go back to the top of the for loop. And this time we encountered 11, two and F. Since F it's an end of a building, we go into this else condition, two occurs only once. So we're going to delete two and deleting two again, doesn't change the current max height. So we're going to do nothing about it and go back to the top of the for loop and encounter our last value 11, four F. So we're going to delete four from this map because there is only one count of four. And after this, the current max height becomes zero. So current max height is zero, which is not same as previous max height. So what we go into this if condition and we're going to add 11, which is this value current max height, which is zero into the final result, which is this value here. At this point of time, we have no more building points to be explored. So we're just going to return this result, which is, which is this, which is this result here. So this is all I have to talk about. Uh, this is all I have to talk about the skyline problem. Again, the time complexity is uh, n log n and the space complexity is O of n. Please like this video, share this video, comment on this video, check out my Facebook page and check out my GitHub link. The link to this code is in the description section of the video. And also for users who like Python, I also have the Python code in the description section of the video. Thanks again for watching this video.